Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and this is my tool review for the Blue Driver OBD2 scanner. So an OBD2 scanner is something that reads the check engine light, but the Blue Driver is much more than that, and I'm really excited to show you why. So let's start with the box it comes in. Take it out, do a little unboxing here. This is very small. It works off of Bluetooth, so you're going to need a smartphone or a tablet. But there are no wires to get in the way, and the app is free. So now you have an idea of what we're looking at. Let's go check out the box. Right on the box, it shows you where you could get the app. You could get it for Android devices or Apple devices. The back of the box shows us that we have a one-year warranty. It works on iPods, iPhones, iPads, and pretty much any Android device with Bluetooth. On here, it specifies that this will work on all 1996 and newer vehicles that are sold in North America, and then all vehicles sold in Europe 2001 and newer, and that's for gas, and then 2004 and newer for diesel. For Australia and New Zealand, it's all 2006 and newer vehicles, and then it says for other countries, check your manual for OBD2 compliance. And the Blue Driver is designed in Canada and made in China. We're in my pickup truck, which is a 2001 Mazda, and like most cars, you just go underneath the dash, and this is where you'll find your OBD2 port. All you have to do is grab your blue driver, match up the connector, and push it right in. So right now I don't have the app on my phone. I'm going to show you how easy it is to get it in real time. You just go to the Play Store, type in blue driver, hit install, accept, it's downloading, it's installing, then you hit open, and boom. The great thing about the Android app, you can see right here, it's asking you to turn on the Bluetooth so it'll connect automatically. So I'm just going to hit yes. And with the blue driver connected to the OBD2 port, turn the key to the run position. The blue light will flash and it'll let you know it's connecting to your device. If it flashes red, then there's a problem with the connection and just restart this process. On the screen, it'll let you know the device was paired and then now you can use the scanner. I'm going to show you the screen in the dark so you can see it better and I'm going to switch over to an iPad. Okay, so now that it's dark, we're going to switch over from my Android cell phone to the iPad. Now you can use the blue driver with the car in the run position or with the car actually running. In this case, I have my truck running. And what you notice right away is you have this really simple interface right on the home screen of the app. You click there to read the codes, you click there to clear the codes. If you have any codes and you want to see any reports, you click there to get the repair reports. If you have any codes, you can see the freeze frame data. You can check the emissions and the smog to see if you'll pass emissions. You have mode 6, you have information about your check engine light, how long has it been on, stuff like that. Vehicle information and then a little flashlight. And then at the bottom here, you could click live data. And then the live data pops up if you want to look at that. And you could click at the bottom again where it says more. And then you get like the options and stuff, the user manual, settings, updating the sensor, other stuff like that. So we'll go back to the main screen. Now that you got a quick overview of the app, and let's go to the most common feature with this thing. It's read the codes, which sets it apart from most of the other OBD2 scanners, is this right here. On most OBD2 scanners, you could check the check engine light. But with the blue driver, what you could do is you could check the check engine codes, you could check transmission codes, ABS codes, airbag codes, and other module codes. So right now you can only get the airbag, ABS, transmission, and other module codes on American vehicles such as Ford, GM, and Chrysler. But you can get the check engine light codes on any OBD2 vehicle. But since we're in a Ford vehicle, let's go do a full scan. So we're going to go to all system modules and check that one. And it's going to go through this process. It does take a little while, but that's because it's scanning everything. And by little while it takes like two minutes. Okay, so after about two minutes, we get all our information popping up on the screen. Let's take a look. You can see here we don't have any check engine lights. We don't have any transmission lights. We have one powertrain control module code. It's a P1000. And then if you click on the code, depending on if the data is in, no, the data isn't in the, their database. If your VIN number and the code is in their database, It'll give you information such as probable causes and the top reported fix, so what people have done to fix that code. But a P1000 code is just a OBD2 system readiness check. It's nothing important. So we'll go back. So we got that one done. Now we have two anti-lock brake module codes. It's a C1233 and a C1234. Again, you could click on the code 
to see if it comes up but there's no data in their database for my vehicle so it's not going to tell me what it is again you could just look it up real quickly and they always update any information they get so every Monday there's new updates so maybe this week my vehicle isn't in their database but the next week it will be because they see that I'm running it now you can just tap right here to clear those codes specifically I'll clear the powertrain module code as well and the last code that we have is a B1318 code and that's listed under generic electronic module codes it means that the battery voltage is low and I actually have a problem because my fusible link is bad so I'm gonna clear that I'm gonna fix my fusible link soon I'll have a video on that and I'll explain all about that but that gives you a good idea how you can read the codes and clear the codes if you wanted to clear all the codes really quickly you just come here and you hit clear and it clears everything now let's just say you do have some check engine light codes or transmission codes or ABS codes or airbag codes whatever the case may be and you want to know more about the codes you just come right here to repair reports here's a sample report for a P2716 code and you just click report and this is a pressure control solenoid circuit malfunction and that gives you all of this information right here it gives you the four possible causes of this check engine light it could be that the ECM has failed or there's different problems with the shift solenoid it gives you the top reported fix and the top reported fix is to replace the PCM it gives you three frequently reported fixes and then down here it gives you all the fixes that people have done that have also worked so with one check engine code you get all this information potentially Again, it doesn't have all this information for every check engine code for every car, but based on your VIN, based on what codes that you have, you could get a lot of information, and it just makes diagnosing the problem that much more simple. So we're going to go back, let's check out other features. Freeze frame, if you have a check engine light and you want to know when the check engine light happened, under what conditions, you'll get all that information here. Obviously, I don't have a check engine light, but you could see all the different parameters it'll be checking. The smog check, we'll check that out. You can run a smog check, I'm going to do that right now. And this will actually run a smog check so you know if you're going to pass emissions. So before you head over to DMV to go get your car inspected, you could come here and check it yourself. You also have mode 6. This is a great feature, again that is not common on most OBD2 scanners. What mode 6 does is it allows you to check each sensor and to see if they're within the parameters. So you can click on a sensor, for example, this is the rich to lean sensor threshold voltage, and you can see specifically the voltage. Okay, the minimum, here's the value that we have, and then your maximum. And you could do that for a bunch of different sensors. So that's mode six. You could go over here to mill status, and then if your check engine light is on, it'll give you information such as how long it's been on, like if it's been on for three days, 20 days, a year, and then how far you've been driving with it on, which is really helpful for when you're buying a used car. Then you can have your vehicle information, and basically you just enter your VIN, and then it'll give you information on like where your vehicle was made, what year, all that good stuff. The last thing they included is a flashlight, and I just blinded myself and the camera, and you could turn your screen into a flashlight so you could see things. For example, I'm working in my truck right now on top of my center console. And that could actually be pretty useful, especially if you don't have a flashlight. Usually cell phones have a flashlight feature though, but a neat little addition. Now let's go over to live data. This is pretty cool stuff. So you click the little gear at the top left corner, and then you can get all the supported sensors that your car has. Right now I have engine RPMs, timing advance for cylinder one, and then the oxygen sensors, the voltage. And you can actually see the graphs. That green graph right there, that's the oxygen sensor. That should be bouncing up and down. I'll have a video all about oxygen sensors, how to test them, and how to use graphs like this to see if they're working properly or if it's your catalytic converter that's bad. Now if you want to save this information or you want to share it, you just click in the corner here. That pops up, you can email it to yourself, put it on Twitter, Facebook, make a copy, put it on Dropbox, pretty much get it to yourself any way you can. Another neat feature, if you click on the arrow here, you get a gauge. Not only do you get a gauge, but you also get the voltage in a digital readout and you'll get a little graph under here. So these are just little features that the Blue Driver has that I'm trying to point out to you. And that's basically it. So now I'm gonna go turn on the sunlight and we'll finish up this product review. Okay, back to the daylight. Overall, if you can't tell, I really like the Blue Driver. For the price, with all the features it has, especially the capabilities to read airbag codes, transmission codes, ABS codes, 
and all those other different modules, that really sets this apart. Not only that, this is really easy to use. It's super easy interface. People who don't know about cars, if you're a beginner, you don't really know too much, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, and you don't want to take your car to a dealership, check the code yourself, you could use this, you could get all that good information on repair reports, and it's just something that's going to be helpful. Now I've been talking about a lot of positives, some negatives. You do need a smartphone or a tablet. Not everybody has a smartphone or tablet. While that is a negative, it's also a positive because you're piggybacking off of the fast processor in your smartphone or tablet. Normally you don't have fast processors and scanners, unless if they're really expensive. The other thing is, this makes it wireless. Wireless is nice. So again, with simplicity, it's just this adapter and your smartphone or tablet compared to all these different things. Here's an old brick, snap-on brick. You have to put all these different things in there for different vehicles. They plug in. Obviously, this is old technology. There's all these different wires and adapters and stuff. Now, this has its place. I'm not saying this is bad. It's also older technology, but I'm just proving a point. This is not wireless. This isn't as easy. This is more complex to learn. Meanwhile, this is nice and simple, and for the price, you can't beat it. This video is running almost 10 minutes. Let me finish this up right now. Would I recommend this to a friend? Yes, for sure. This has Chris Fix's approval. I really like this. Hopefully this product review was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. As always, you can find the link to this product in the description, so make sure you check that out. And also, if you have any questions, just comment below. And I'm curious, what kind of OBD2 scanners do you guys use? I know there's a bunch of different ones on the market. They have other Bluetooth ones just like this, but I'd like to hear what you guys think.